Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Asha Kuthari Chaudhary and I'm a professor of English at Guwahati University. The course we are looking at is Indian writing in English and the module that we will now focus upon is called The Poetics and Politics of Language and Indian Prose. The module addresses the history of colonial encounter in terms of the exploration of an authentic Indian self through the question of authenticity of the Indian self mediated through the prism of an alien language. The impact of the English language on the collective cultural imaginary remains crucial to the question of Indianness and the history of Indian prose writings is embroiled in historical and cultural thought. The poetics of language is integral to the politics of representations and the history of prose is crucial to the integration of the English language. The discourses of colonialism and nationalism in the context of India's history of colonialism addresses the strategic evolution of such ideological and cultural formations in terms of articulating Indian national identity. Now, autobiographies, biographies, travelogues, serious philosophical essays, analysis of current affairs, uh, religious discourses, collections of light pieces and memoirs. These are a whole plethora of things that we can discuss in this module. The module is designed to read critically the plethora of writings imbued with nationalistic rhetoric by Aurobindo Ghosh, Rabindranath Tagore, Jawaharlal Nehru, Niradzi Chaudhary and others in this context. In terms of literary representations and non-fictional prose, we have the work of Aurobindo Ghosh, Rabindranath Tagore, Jawaharlal Nehru and others that are noteworthy. We find that someone like Ram Mohan Roy, for instance, was the founder and editor of two vernacular weekly newspapers, Shambad Kumudi, which was in Bengali, and Meera Lakhbari, which is in Persian. As a founding member of the Bengal Herald, which came out in English, Ram Mohan Roy mobilized popular opinion and a consequent protest against the censorship of the press by the Governor General. His reformist zeal is expressed in the public campaigns he organized to demonstrate his opposition to the Sati, for example. A morning star of the Renaissance, his famous writings include four appeals to the Christian public. Another is the brief remarks regarding modern encroachments on the ancient rights of females according to the Hindu law of inheritance which comes out in 1823. Then we have the Bhagalpur letter or translations of an abridgment of the Vedant. We have Kena. Then you have a text called Isa in 1816 and Katha, which comes out in 1817. Mundaka, which comes out 1819, which are uh, ex uh, expositions of Upanishads. And then you have a defense of Hindu theism and a plethora of other works. These are seminal in nature. His social awareness is expressed in the form of tracts against Sati, the translation of a conference between an advocate for and an opponent of the practice of video burning, which comes out in 1818, and similar texts. In the works of Behramji M. Malabari, and Govardhan Ram M. Tripathi, we note excellent prose writings. We have texts like Gujarat and the Gujaratis, notes on an infant marriage and enforced widowhood. We have these texts where Malabari brings in the, uh, in terms of a weekly presentation in the Indian Spectator, he, which he edits, all of these pieces come out in um, Voices of India and East and West. As far as Govardhan M. Tripathi is concerned, his works include things like uh, Saraswati Chandra, the, which is a first classic of Gujarati fiction and is published in four volumes over a period of 14 years. He then starts writing Scrapbook in 1885 and Classical Poets of Gujarat 
and their influence on society and morals, which is at first delivered as a lecture and then published. Some of his other essays, The Hindu Ideal of Poverty, which comes in 1903, and the keynote of The Economics of Hinduism, which comes in 1905, are among some of his important uh, writings and they show a remarkable kind of growing convergence. In Karma Yogin, the English weekly newspaper founded by Sri Aurobindo, he combines political journalism with tracts on education and art. His ability to integrate rhythm and diction as the vehicle of intense thought is crucial to his concept of integral yoga, which projects liberation from the world. His essay on spiritual and cultural subjects are also published posthumously in Essays Divine and Human. And his prose writings are on philosophy. You have the life divine on yoga, where you have the text which is entitled The Synthesis of Yoga. He has a number of scriptural exegesis such as The Secret of the Veda or Essay on the Gita. On sociology and political science, we have books like The Human Cycle or The Ideal of the Human Unity and other literary and cultural criticisms as well. With Robindranath Tagore, who was born in 1861 and lived until 1941, the autobiography Jibon Shmiti, which comes in 1911, was translated into English as My Reminiscences in 1970. His English prose includes Nationalism, which comes in 1917, and The Religion of Man in 1931. The political prose of this time gets its momentum going in the writings of Mahatma Gandhi, who lived between 1869 and 1948, and Jawaharlal Nehru, who lived between 1889 and 1964. A political reformist, as we all are very well aware of, Gandhi's writings include pamphlets such as An Appeal to Every Britain in South Africa, 1895, The Indian Franchise, 1895 again. He also launched journals like the Indian Opinion, Young India, Harijan, Hind Swaraj, etc. that comes in 1909 and is written in the form of a dialogue between an editor and a reader addressing the issue of Indian independence. He translated it into English himself and published it as Indian Home Rule in March 1910. Satyagraha in South Africa of 1928, Discourses on the Gita which comes in 1930 and his autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth um, are some of his seminal works. With Jawala Nehru, we find numerous articles, essays, pamphlets on political, cultural and literary subjects and the most famous, of course, being Soviet Russia, which comes in 1928, an essay called Wither India in 1932, the book of letters where you have glimpses of world history, which comes in 1934, an autobiography and the discovery of India in 1946. Among some of the most notable writers who write in prose, of a very unique nature is the, the writer Nirad C. Chaudhary, who lived between 1897 and 1999. He is noted for works like Three Horsemen of the New Apocalypse, which comes in 1997. The earlier books that he is mostly known for, of course, are the autobiography of an unknown Indian in 1951, a Passage to England in 1959, The Intellectual in India in 1967, Calcutta and the Vanity Bag in 1976, and Hinduism, A Religion to Live By in 1979. Having looked at some of these um, writers who have been writing uh, in a sense straddling 
pre-independence and post-independence India, if we take a look at some of the prose writings that have been emanating from post-colonial India, some of the notable ones are Ved Mehta and Dhruva and Chaudhary. And a volume that comes from uh, Dhruva Chaudhary in 1996 is East is East and West is West and is a collection of articles while his last book Three Horsemen of the New Apocalypse which comes in 1997 expresses his critique of contemporary British society. This book is replete with a comparative assessment of India and England. Rajiv Gandhi and Rama's Kingdom uh, which is a 1995 a uh, book by Ved Mehta, which is actually a collection of articles on India that appeared in the New Yorker. We have uh, another text called the New India, which had earlier been published in 1978. A Family Affair, India Under Three Prime Ministers, which came in 1982, are both books that are replete with a contemporary kind of sensibility. Ved Mehta is known for John is easy to please, which he wrote in 1967 and which is a work of literary criticism and interviews. Moving on to another very interesting uh, part of what we know as prose writing that are to be found in letters of various hue. Letters provide a glimpse to the integration of personal and public life as evident in Nehru's letters from a father to a daughter. Nehru's letters to chief ministers, uh, which have been edited by G. Parthasarthi in 1986, reveals his commitment to a democratic kind of idealism. Mulkraj Anand's old myths and new myths letters from Mulkraj Anand to KVS Murthy which was published in 1991, and Anand to Atma, Letters of Mulkraj Anand to Atma Ram, which came out in 1994, are evidence of his social purpose. The letters of David Makachan to P. Lal, Nayantara Sahgal and E. N. Mangat Rai's relationship extracts from a correspondence that comes in 1994, the English language and the Indian spirit, which comes in 1986. And the correspondences between the Irish poet Kathleen Rain and the Pondicherry-based poet K.D. Setna, letters of Sarojini Naidu that are, of course, earlier, uh, between 1879 to 1949 and published in 1997. Um, then we have the le selected letters of 1890s to 1940s, that were uh, edited and introduced by Makrant Paranjpe in 1997. And lastly, the Mahatma and the po uh, Poetess letters are some of the seminal collections of this genre. The other, one of the most important uh, branches of prose writing we know is the essay, the proper essay, which could be personal, political or philosophical. We need to look at some of these essays that have been published from uh, this whole span of pre-independence or post-colonial uh, times. R. K. Narayan's uh, The Storyteller's World, Stories, Essays and Sketches comes out in 1989 and a writer's nightmare selected essays uh, of 1958 to 1988 is published in 1988. Mulkrajanan's prose Kama Yoga, some notes on the philosophical basis of the erotic art of India comes out in 1991 and poet painter Paintings by Rabindranath Tagore comes out in 1985. Some street games of India comes out in 1985 for children and the Hindu view of art in 1986, which is the first published, of course, in 1933. And the Kama Sutra of Vatsyayan, which comes out in 1981, are some of the seminal works that we must make note of. P. Lal has produced abridged versions of the Ramayan, 
and the Mahabharata and among some of the other notable works are those by J. Krishnamurti. Writings in social sciences proliferate as we see the publication of subaltern studies, writings on South Asian history and society. The, the first of the six volumes that comes out between 1986 to 1988 were edited by Ronajit Guha. The later volumes were edited by Partha Chatterjee, Gyanendra Pandey, Shahid Amin, Deepish, Chakraborty and others. In terms of history, Romila Thapar's forte is her work on ancient Indian history and historiography and among her most important books uh, are Interpreting Early India which comes in 1993 and Time as Metaphor of India in 1996. She has also got other texts like Cultural Transaction and Early India, Tradition and Patronage, which comes in 1996. Urban history resurfaces with Pamela Kamwar's uh, Imperial Shimla, The Political Culture of the Raj in 1990, and Calcutta, The Living City, edited by Shukanta Chaudhary, which came out in 1995. Also, we have Percival Spears, Delhi, its monuments and history. In the post-independence period, we find a marked increase of books written on India and Indianness, which is often viewed as a strategic choice for the post-colonial writers. With Amitav Ghosh's Countdown, which comes in 1999, which is about India, after the nuclear text of Pokhran on May uh, 11th, 1998, Sunil Kilnani's The Idea of India, which comes in 1997, Sashi Tharoor's India, From Midnight to the Millennium, which comes in 1997, and Gurcharan Das's India Unbound, that comes in 2000, are noteworthy contributions in this area. An important historic landmark was the publication of the Encyclopedia of Indian Literature, which was published by the Saithi Academy in six volumes between 1987 to 1994. The Dictionary of Indian Literature, Volume 1, Beginnings to 1850 by Sujit Mukherjee came in 1999. Masterpieces of Indian Literature was edited by K. M. George and came in three volumes in 1997. Raja Rao's The Meaning of India comes in 1997. Interrogating Postcolonialism, Theory, Text and Context was edited by Harish Trivedi and Minakshi Mukherjee in 1996. Then we have Ajaz Ahmed's In Theory, Classes, Nations, Literatures, which is a seminal text that comes out in 1993. And this is followed by uh, Makarand Paranjpe's Decolonization and Development, Hind Swaraj Revisioned, also in 1993. All of these are noted prose works of this period. Where women writers on India and Indianness are concerned, we find that they also seem to demonstrate the growing concern with the politics of language, imperial domination, and the construction of a unique Indian identity. With masks of conquest, literary study, and English rule in India, Gauri Vishwanathan reveals the politics behind the study of literature, which is basically used as a tool for imperialist domination. Other writers of note are Rajeshri Sundarajan in her work, such as Real and Imagined Women, Gender, Culture and Postcolonialism of 1993, the work of Kusum Sangari, who has written extensively on gender, Minakshi Mukherjee's Twice Born Fiction, which comes in 1971, a little earlier than the other two, that also explored the issue of feminizing political discourse, women and the novel in India. Um, you have Jasbir Jain's work, you have G. N. Davies' first book, After Amnesia, uh, Tradition and Change in Indian Literary Criticism. All of these are significant and seminal works. 
In terms of the short story, we find that this genre also becomes important to the politics of representation as we witness the mingling of creative and socio-political issues, urban and rural questions of language in the collections of so short stories that are available for us. Shankar Ram's The Children of Kaveri, which comes in 1926 and The Creatures All in 1933, is followed by A.S.P. Iyer's Indian After Dinner Stories that comes in 1927, Tales of Ind in 1944 and Famous Tales of India 1954. We have also S.K. Chettur stories in Muffled Drums and other stories which comes even earlier, 1917. Manjeri Ishwaran's The Naked Shingles, which comes in 1941. Ang Angry Dust in 1944. Fancy Tales in 1947. Painted Tigers in 1956 and A Madras Admiral in 1959 are all important collections exploring reworking of legends, social reforms, the plight of women in traditional Hindu society, the question of an authentic Indian self and so on. With Raja Rao's collection of short stories, The Cow of the Barricades and other stories which comes in 1947, we find a noteworthy contribution to this genre. Mulkraj Anand retold traditional Indian tales in his Indian Fairy Tales which came in 1946, More Indian Fairy Tales 1961, The Tractor and the Corn, Goddess and other stories in 1947 and so many other such collections. The other big giant in terms of short story writing, of course, is R.K. Narayan, whose career as a short story writer is marked by collections such as Cyclone and the other stories in 1943, Dodu and other stories 1943 again, Malguri Days, which comes in 1943, Gods, Demons and Others in 1964, which is a reworking of the famous ancient Hindu legends. In the genre of the novel, we have names like Bhabani Bhattacharya, Kushwant Singh, Manohar Malgaonkar, Chaman Nahal and Arun Joshi, who also contribute significantly to the genre of the short stories. We have Bhattacharya's collection of short stories such as Indian Cavalcade. We have also to consider Kushwant Singh's The Mark of Vishnu and other stories, The Voice of God and other stories and so on. With Manohar Malgaonkar, we have pieces like A Toast in Warm Wine and Bombay Beware. All of these are replete with unique perspectives on the Indian scenario and the development of the Indian identity. With Chaman Nahal's A Weird Dance and Other Stories or Arun Joshi's The Survivor, we all find extremely noteworthy collections uh, that contribute to both the genres of the novel and the short story. In the other important uh, divisions that we have in terms of prose writing, we must consider the remarkable works that have uh, come about in the realm of autobiography and memoir writing. Among the most remarkable ones, of course, are R.K. Narayan's My Days in 1975, or My Dateless Diary, which comes in 1960, which is followed by Mulkraj Anand's Pilpali Sahab, the story of childhood under the Raj, which came in 1985, or Conversations in Bloomsbury, which comes in 1981, which is a nostalgic narrative of reminiscences of his years in England as a young man. With Verrier Elvin's autobiography, The Tribal World of Verrier Elvin, which comes in 1964, we have uh, a work that has notably won the Saiti Academy Award. The other most well-known of all autobiographies uh, written in India is, of course, Nirad C. Chaudhary's The Autobiography of an Unknown Indian, which comes in 1951, and Die Hearts. Grat Anark in 1987. 
Ruskin Bond's Scenes from a Writer's Life and The Lamp is Lit Leaves from a Journal are both memoirs of great lyrical intensity. And um, The Tunnel of Time, which is a 1998 autobiography, is also an important work that comes from R.K. Lakshman. The other notable inclusion that we must have here is that by Tom Morais, the poet, who has published two volumes of his autobiography entitled My Son's Father in 1971 and Never at Home in 1992. In terms of biography, some of the remarkable works that we might um, underline right now are Nirad C. Chaudhary's biography of Max Miller or the Scholar Extraordinary, which came in 1974, Rajmohan Gandhi's Rajaji, A Life, which came in 1997, uh, The Good Boatman, A Portrait of Gandhi, which comes in 1995, are some of the remarkable works in terms of biography writing. And coming to among the last genres that we will handle now in this module is uh, the genre of the travelogue. The first Indian immigrant, Dean Muhammad, published his travel logue, uh, which is entitled The Travels of Dean Muhammad in 1794. And this goes to show how old really this genre is in terms of prose writing in English. There are other remarkable works that we must uh, make note of. And these are by Vikram Seth, Salman Rushdie, Alan Seeley, Amitav Ghosh, and many of the other contemporary novelists, poets, and other writers. To sum up, this module has been on the evolution of Indian prose, and we have tried to situate the various categories of prose writings in socio-historical and cultural context that we discussed in the first module. We have tried to integrate the theoretical knowledge into the arena of specific texts, genres, as well as authors to critically deal with the ideas of self, identity, national formations, and representational categories. We will have to try to focus on the problematic of language use and trace the history in the context of colonial encounter and the modes of resistance. Thank you.